In this home theater builder video, I'm talking about acoustic panels, and spoiler alert, this was the single most impactful thing I did in my entire home theater space. So when I finished up my room enough at the end of 2018, we actually started using it. And except for the curtains on the walls, they were bare. And overall, I was pleased with the performance of the space. But there were those moments. Again, recall that I didn't do anything constructurally significant inside the walls of my room. We padded and carpeted over a wood floor, which was already over the cement basement floor. The walls were framed with usual construction, but we did opt to put sound dampening insulation inside the interior of our entire home, actually, long before any thoughts of a theater space, just for the generally nicer audibleness around the house. We also did have acoustic underlayment put down under the flooring on every level of the Again, just to try to roll off the harshness of having a fairly solid surface space throughout the entire house, given we have just the hickory hardwood floors throughout and we didn't do carpet or anything. So, no double drywall for the theater, no resilient channel, no green glue or anything else that was happening in the home theater space. Just the simple curtains, carpet and pad, and the drywall sheets with that interior insulation. I had never acoustically treated a space before either. I've been running 5.1 or more surround sound audio setups since 2000, but prior to this room in 2018, those had been exclusively in open living rooms. So over my years of home theater, I can't count how many times I've read about acoustic treatments, panels, and how the best speakers in the world can be entirely hamstrung in performance by the environment in which they're used. So about six months after putting the home theater space into use, it was time to formally treat it. I considered really two main options for this. One, building my own panels, or two, after shopping a bit, GIK. GIK is a brand that I think is pretty well known in the enthusiast space for making good quality in a variety of panels and such, not pricing them astronomically, and I also really like their stated commitment to greenness in their products and in their manufacturing. So first, why no DIY? While the project would have been within my capabilities to do, it certainly would have challenged and further developed my carpentry skills to actually do it, along with needing to buy a variety of tools and so on. Given my targeted volume of panels that are actually in the room as well, it would have been a lot to build, and I simply didn't want to invest the time versus, versus buying something professionally designed and made and installably ready to go. I commend you folks out there that really get your hands into your home theater by making stuff like this as well as speakers and so on but we contracted to have the curtains done for the room and it just made sense relative to the time and price to buy the panels also so then gik i started researching different product offerings around the gik site and they have a ton of options to sort through the best shopping experience i found though was with the over the phone support it was awesome Working with the tech from GIK, I provided all kinds of details, sketches, and pictures of my space, along with gear listings, use cases, and so on for the room. And after a variety of discussion, the rep was able to make what turned out to be excellently performing suggestions well worth taking. So if you're trying to piecemeal a treatment system together on your own, stop wasting your time and just reach out to GIK. Work with one of their pros directly. The recommendation support was no cost as well. In the end, I purchased two room kit number three packages to fill my space with a few specific alterations per the advice of the GIK tech. The room spec was like this. The normal number three kit includes three 242 acoustic panels, four tri-trap corner base traps, and one monster base trap with flex range technology. Doubling the kits, of course, gave me six 242s, eight corner base traps, and two monster base traps. All in all, this was about $2,100 of panels out the door, including shipping. Four of the eight corner traps were outfitted with range limiters, and both monster base traps were outfitted with scatter plates for diffusive effects. Each corner of my room has two stacked tri-traps. No special mounting or anything was needed. One just simply rests right on top of the other, and given their size and weight, it's completely stable. There are three 242 panels going down each side wall of the room, with two on each side more at the couch position, the listening position, and one further back with a little extra opening in the spacing to slide my side surround speakers in their stands in. Finally, the two monster traps with scatter plates are just on the back wall. So, the question you've all been waiting for, did it make any difference? OMFG, yes. As I said, this was the single most impactful element to the overall performance of the room, 
no questions asked. Prior to the panels, I could sit mid-couch, clap my hands loudly, and you could hear that echoey decay that you get in a room made up mostly of solid surfaces. After the panels, not anymore. You hear the clap and it's all done. Everything immediately tightened up as well. Sound was tangibly more direct and clear from all of the channels around the room. Just prior to the panels arriving, we actually watched Aquaman in there. Of course, that movie is set underwater, and as such, it's a pretty good bass workout, as the audio track is specifically trying to make the whole movie experience feel a sense of that underwater pressure. There's a scene later on in the movie where Aquaman interacts with a massive underwater sea creature when trying to get his trident. At some times throughout this movie, and most particularly in this scene, I really wanted to turn it down and even just turn it off. It was just too much. The sound was muddy, unfocused, and just oppressive. It was uncontrolled, and I was legit fearing for watching this movie was going to physically break or crack something around the room. The same scene though after the panels? Night and day. The intended heaviness and pressure is still there, but the overdone, muddy, out of control sensibility is gone. The panels tame the experience in its wildness while keeping the whole listening experience still alive and visceral. I put good money into the audio gear and speakers in my room and those big Focal 1038 towers with the dual rail subs can really put out sound. The panels though made it abundantly clear how much of a waste that gear is without a decent environment within which to let it all loose. So I drank the Kool-Aid and I'm a 100% believer now with first-hand experience. You can spend all you want on sources, processing, and gear, but if you want to fully realize the value of that spending in terms of audio performance and seize on the performance of your equipment, then address your space and treat your room. Budget gear in a controlled space would surely outperform luxury gear in an improperly designed environment. So what's next for my room then? Well, I put up a pretty good stack of treatments with 15 total panels in a near 3,000 cubic foot space. The floor is carpeted with the thick pad and the couch I think serves as a pretty decent sound trap, maybe even more than a few theater chairs might. We have the curtains, but per my prior videos, those are there more for other reasons, like hiding wires and aesthetics, rather than acoustics. That said, I would like to get panels on the ceiling to kill that first reflection spot between the front speaker array and the couch. Three or maybe four panels of the same 242 variety right in a row along that reflection point on the ceiling should do the job. I could probably also benefit from at least one more monster base trap behind the couch in the middle of the wall between the rear surrounds. I can't wall mount that one though given the curtain and the closet door underneath it. However, GIK provides attachable stands and they actually have an extra tall uh, base trap meant to stand freely. So the panel would be fine right there in front of the curtain. After that, I think I'm done treating in here. My next target will be going into the HVAC room that partially shares an adjacent wall to the back left of the theater room and start adding some cheaper absorption and so on in there. I'd like to contain our geothermal furnace fan and pump noise more inside that room itself. Not even just for the theater, but for the rest of the house as well. Before I wrap up, I want to comment on a couple specific elements of the GIK panels themselves. First, I opted for straight black. I thought about doing something artistic or even custom movie posters and such, but opted against that idea. If I had to pick six to eight of my favorite movies posters to put on those panels, it would be incredibly hard. Let alone making those choices into panel art becomes a static decision. What if one of my choices falls out of my favor or something better comes along and I'd rather have that poster than one I already have? I'm stuck either looking at something I don't want to see or spending more money to change it. I believe choosing the neutral, simple panels with the blacks, grays, and whites of the room makes for more of a timeless presentation that won't fall out of favor. And of course, no worries about flat black panel performance once the lights go down for content watching. Second, while overall I think GIK makes a pretty quality product, over a quantity of 15 panels, there were some imperfections. A couple of edges here and there came nicked. It's unfortunate, and I didn't complain to Gick when I got the panels, so they are what they are now two years later, but I think some slightly better quality control was in order at GIK. I'm also not a huge fan of how GIK badges were affixed, seemingly glued onto the face of every single panel, especially when these panels were chosen to be black. I haven't tried to take them off, but I probably would like to, and maybe a hot hair dryer would probably do the job without leaving goo or gunk or whatnot behind. I understand companies want to brand their products, of course, but in this case, I think it should have been optional. 
Maybe put the badges in the box and let me choose to put them on or not. Or perhaps have a variant of the badge that has a black background for use on black or darker panels. I have a black panel with a white badge. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Again, it's not a huge deal, but it's little stuff like that that separates customer experience with a company from being okay to being delightful. So that's panels. Go buy some for yourself, like now. But wait, please like and subscribe first. Okay, thanks. Now go, spend, and be happy with your next level room performance. You'll love it.